Thanks for tuning back in everyone. Today we're talking about lure selection based on weather. It doesn't matter if it's a sunny day or if it's the classic prefrontal days. We're going to cover it all and we're going to start right now. Right in. Here, finally got one here. Oh, beautiful. It's going to be a beautiful pick. You might even get sunset. Hey everyone, welcome right. back to another video. This one was suggested by another one of our viewers, Jim Janik had left a comment in one of the YouTube community tabs asking if we could talk about lure selection based on weather. So appreciate the question. We'll try and cover it today. We're going to break down weather in four different directions because we can't cover every single thing that you might encounter on the water. So we're going to cover stable weather. So that's just a normal kind of stable weather pattern over the course of a week, just for an example. We're going to cover the prefrontal. So that's just before a storm hits. Then we'll go into post frontal. So that's after the storms hit, the storms kind of passed. And a lot of the times that's the conditions everybody hates. And then we'll take post frontal a little bit further. And we'll talk about those dreaded bluebird days that follow a big storm. If we're going to talk about stable weather, that's what everybody hopes when they come up to Canada. That where they want that prefrontal. You have a storm coming in on the horizon, but a lot of times stable weather is the easiest to fish. You can get a pattern going over the course of a week if you're coming up to Canada. And for us, stable weather means picking lures based on locations and structure. So for us on stable weather days, we just stick to known lures and I'm not going to go into a lot of it here because I think everybody has lures that they're comfortable with. And it just it's easier for you as the angler to just use what you know is going to work in any given situation, whether it be weeds, rocks, or, or a mix of it. So I won't touch on that a whole bunch. When we move on to prefrontal, so now we got a storm on the horizon. So if you're up in Canada on one of our big shield lakes, say you're staying on Eagle, and you see you got a storm coming in from the northwest, and it looks like you got a couple hours, the fish most likely will be pretty aggressive. It doesn't matter what type of structure you're on, but for us, what we're looking for is the most active fish on any given piece of structure and if we're going to be looking at lure selection for that prefrontal we're going to want to go with aggressive noisy lures and we're going to want lures that cover the water column because you're not sure where the fish are going to be relating to any given structure so the second part of having aggressive lures doesn't mean it has to be the most noisy lure um, a type of noisy lure would be a flap tail this is by big guy baits and something that makes you know a lot of noise on the water but in a lot of times you're going to have wind associated with that front moving in although that's not always the case but for us we want lures that move some water so when you get into bigger diving rise this is a scallywag by lumox lures it moves a lot of water and that can help trigger bites from active fish just having lures that move water rubber is another type of lure that moves a lot of water, it displaces a lot of water, and fish can find these from a long distance away. One that we're really looking forward to this year, this is the new Ultra Dog, the pound and a half or, um, Bulldog. So we're looking forward to using this in these prefrontal conditions where we know we have active fish. And again, just pick aggressive noisy lures and try and cover the water column so like from a top water to a bucktail to something that gets down in three to five feet and once you start to find where the fish are sitting in the water column you can kind of fine tune that before that storm hits post frontal is the start of the hard conditions when you come up to canada and we see it a lot guys come up here they show up on a saturday we had a huge storm roll through on friday night and they end up with three or four days of classic post frontal bluebird skies and the fish just seemingly disappear which is not really the case they've just they've dug down into the the structure or the weeds and they are harder to get out but for us on this type of post frontal we want to slow down our presentation so you want to look at stuff that gives you like a pull pause or a twitch style bait, something that you can get into structure, into cover, and you can pull it through, you can let it pause, you can get it in the bite zone, or the strike zone if you will, and let it hang there a little bit. So for us, 
anybody who's watched any of our videos, you know we use a lot of diving rise from Suix to some of the Harvey baits to the bar fighters. Again, the Scallywag by Lumox Lures. Anything that you can get in, pull pause. Uh, another one that we used a lot last year was the Ripper by Top Line Baits. This is the new jointed one that I'm really looking forward to. And I just think that that style of bait just lends itself to post frontal because you can get it in there. You can let it hang. I know a lot of guys use glide baits in that situation. This is one from Harvey Baits. We don't use a lot of glides ourselves. We just, we gravitate to a couple other styles of lures, but that's not to say they don't work. And I think that's a great time to use it is on those post frontal conditions. And I think this year we will be experimenting more with some glide baits that we can get in and around cover. Another bait that we use a lot on post frontal is rubber. And it can be anything from stuff like I just showed you from the um, Bulldogs to Medusas to Lake X Toads to Bondi Royal Orbas. Something that you can slow down Royal your presentation Orba. a little Bondi bit. Bondi Royal you Orba. Can yeah. Get it into cover, pull pause it out, or in the case of a Bondi Royal Orba, you can just get it in there and you can do a slow roll through and the tail's got a lot of action. Here's one here and I've talked about them in previous videos and this is just a great lure for that type of presentation because you can slow roll this through cover and the tail just like a bulldog has a lot of action and it's a type of lure that we tur turn to a lot on post frontal. If we take post frontal one step further we get into those dreaded high sky bluebird days where a lot of times it's flat calm or near calm very hard to find the fish the fish are not reacting to aggressive lures or aggressive presentations you have to really slow things down and for us on those type of days and we, and we don't shy away from going fishing on those days we just we really target our presentation and our spots and we stick with confidence lures so on those high sky bluebird days, that's not the day to be just digging through the tackle box, throwing anything at them. You want to stick to stuff that you guys really know and you have confidence in, and you really want to stick to high percentage spots. It's not a time to be looking around the lake trying to find new areas or new fish. You will find them, but it's just going to be so much harder to know if the fish are active or moving. So for us, it's always about finding the spot within the spot. So on a lot of the lakes that we fish, we know the broad spot on the lake. As we get into those bluebird skies or post frontal, we start to really pick apart that spot within the spot. And that's always produced for us. And we talked about it in a couple videos over the course of the summer, just sticking with your confidence lures. And again, anybody who's watched us knows, <clears throat> excuse me, that we use a lot of the Dadson blade with no name with the dangle there's a bunch of other companies that have something similar this just seemed to be a standout style of lure for us last year a couple things on spot within the spot i know that's a, a common term in musky fishing and, and some guys know what it means and some don't I, I know some guys will go to a huge weed line and they just fish the entire thing and there can be an inside corner an outside corner and we've talked about it on some of our whiteboard breakdown videos those spots within that bigger context can be key when you have those post frontal conditions those fish will be sitting in known spots where they know they can ambush prey easily without using very much energy and for the angler if you can go in there and start to map out some of those areas you can really narrow down where you need to fish and you don't have to fish unproductive water one other thing i will say on those bluebird days is we'll use it sometimes when we know the fishing's really tough we'll just use it as a reconnaissance day we'll go out we'll start to map out with side scan we'll find structure that we haven't fished a lot or that we want to get to know and when you get high skies and the sun up above around noon and you stand up on your casting deck you can see a lot of structure and a lot in a weed line that normally you wouldn't see and we've been able to find spots within a spot that we didn't really know were there and then we can go back put waypoints on it now we have an exact spot within the spot so we know that under those conditions, we can just go and target a tiny spot and not spend a lot of time fishing the broader spot. And it's worked for us a lot in the past. Fishing through weather can be 
just brutal tough up here on these big shield lakes. Wind can just drive anybody off of a lake. We've talked about wind in past videos. And one thing that helps so much when you're fishing through weather and deciding what to do lure wise is you have to have confidence and check out this video right here for five tips to have more confidence on the water and until next time 54 bus is out of here and we'll catch you guys out on the water later